Right, so today marks the start of your final module, module number three. And the first topic for module number three is centroids. So let's have a bit of an introduction first. Okay, so previously, we discussed concepts of equilibrium and then applied it to the analysis of structures such as trusses and frames. Now, another topic related to equilibrium is your center of gravity and your centroid. Now, these two are often interchanged with, it, with each other. However, even though they consist of the same concept, center of gravity and centroid are two terms that differ based on the concept in which it is used and the object it is used in regards to. So let's look at the difference. Let's start with center of gravity. First definition is it's the point through which the action line of the weight always passes. So it has something to do with weight. Now, another definition for center of gravity is it's the center where the mass of the object is concentrated. Now, because of that, center of gravity is also called center of mass. Okay? Now, let's move on to the centroid. So centroid is the geometric center of an object. So from the given definition, you can already see the difference between the two. Center of gravity is more of a physical property, while centroid is more of a geometrical property. To solve for center of gravity, I need properties like weight, density, and mass to solve for this. And then for centroid, all I need, all I need are dimensions of my object. Okay, So that's one of the basic differences between the two. Now let's look at this final definition for centroid. Okay, it is used to denote the center of a body with uniform density. Now actually, when objects have uniform density or homogeneous density, then its centroid is actually the same as the center of gravity. So center of gravity now is interchangeable with centroid or the points indicate, indicated by each are the same thing. Again, that's only applied to objects with uniform density. Now for our topic, we're gonna focus on objects with uniform density. So therefore center of gravity and centroid will be the same thing, all right? Now some of you might wonder why are we discussing centroid and center of gravity? Well, you'll see here, these are the advantages listed. So if we know the center of gravity of an object, we can first determine the maximum angle that an object can be tilted before it topples over. Now this is beneficial in creating interesting shapes for architecture. Next, it also helps us approximate an object to a point while keeping its inertial properties. So this is beneficial since it greatly simplifies problems of mechanics in which the motion of an oddly shaped object or complicated system needs to be described. So everything will be reduced to a point, which is so much easier. And then inertial properties are just the characteristics that make something resistant to change or motion. Next, it'll help us know if forces will cause linear or rotational motion. So if a rigid object is pushed at its center of mass, then the object would just move in a linear manner, linear motion. So up, down, left, right, diagonal. Okay, simple. So the object would not rotate about its axis regardless of its shape. Now, if an unbalanced force is exerted at a point other than the center of mass, the object would rotate about that center of mass or center of gravity. Next, it will produce uniform stress distribution. So uniform stress distribution is a topic you'll discuss in Strength of Materials, I believe, MEC 32. So in that, uh, loads must be placed so that the line of action of the resultant coincides with the centroid of the cross-section of the member. Remember, we talked about resultant before, just the sum of all the individual forces acting on a body. So the resultant must act on the centroid. Why? Because it reduces stresses, bending stress, shear stress also. The centroid of a member is the most stable point of that member. So it's ideal that forces pass through it. And then lastly, it determines the location of the neutral axis of a member. 
So neutral axis is just a line that passes through the centroid of the cross section of the beam. Okay, and those now are your advantages or importance of centroid or center of gravity. Now I'd like to ask you guys, can anybody tell me an example of a structure that defies the law of center of gravity or centroids? Okay. Popular structure that seems to defy gravity. Okay, so clue, it's in a different country. Okay. One of the most famous structures. Correct. DeAndre, Kathleen, and Andre. So Ibayon Dukura Obre. By the way, your recitation is on a different monitor, that's why you're not seeing it. But don't worry, I'm still recording. So Ibayon. Dupra. And then lastly, Obre. Very good. Okay. So the leaning power of Pisa. So you might be wondering, why is this tower not toppling over? Why is it not falling? Well, it has something to do with its center of gravity. So, concept for center of gravity is that any object that stands typically on its base will keep standing or fall back to its base. So, for example, here, this is the base, okay? So, these um, shapes will fall back to its base until the line drawn from its center of gravity to the base or to the ground falls within the base. So, for example, here, same object, center of gravity is the same. Draw a line, okay, downwards for gravity. And as long as that line passes through the base, it's going to go back to stability. So see, it stands, stands, stands. And if you, if the line goes farther from the base, or rather, yeah, farther from the base, it's going to fall. So let's see the leaning tower of Pisa. So the center of gravity is somewhere here. As you can see, the base of your tower is wider, then at the top it gets thinner. Therefore, center of gravity is lower. Okay, so it's somewhere here. Draw a straight line, and as you can see, that line is still within the base of your tower. And that's why this is not toppling over or not falling. Okay, so that's the reason why your leaning tower of Pisa still stands. Okay. Now, similar to that. Other applications of center, center of gravity are these structures, okay? some gravity-defying structures. Okay, so that's one common application. Another is in judo. Okay? So to explain, let's look at this GIF. GIF. Okay? You have your black belt and your white belt. Black belt is the person executing your throw. By the way, in judo, we call him Sorry, the person executing the throw. The person experiencing the throw is called your uke. Okay? So uke tori. So if you've noticed, the tori, the black belt, is lowering down. Okay? He's sort of crouching before he lifts the opponent into a throw. So that's an example of using the center of gravity to your advantage. So let's look at the sequence of pictures. Okay? So the purpose of, or one of the first steps for judo to throw an opponent is to break their balance. Okay, we call that kuzushi. So breaking the balance. So take these two. Okay, center of gravity of this person is somewhere here. Drawing a straight line like we did earlier, it's within the base of the person. So he's stable. So in order to break that stability, okay, breaking the balance, we have to make sure this line goes farther than the base. So what you can do, first step, you're gonna lower your center of gravity. Why? Because the lower your center of gravity, the harder it is for you to topple over, to fall down. So that's one reason, okay? 
Next, once you're lower, okay, you pull with your arms, okay, the top portion of your opponent's body, and in the same way, you're gonna apply a force here. So look here at the last picture. So this is once again the center of gravity of your opponent. You crouch down, apply force, so there's a force here. There's also a pulling force here. And remember, as I've said earlier, if you have an unbalanced force acting not at the center, the tendency of your object is to rotate. So now the tendency of your opponent is to rotate because you've successfully broken the balance of your opponent. Okay? So you can see here, once you lift, your opponent will tiptoe, creating an imbalance. So center of gravity, or rather this line is now outside the base. So it's easier to throw your opponent. All right, so that's one application of center of gravity in martial arts. By the way, for those who are curious, the name of this throw is Ipon Sayonage. Yeah. Okay. Now, we'll talk about the centroid and center of gravity equations. Okay. So let's start with center of gravity of a flat, flat, flat plate. So the analytical location of the center of gravity is simply a variation of the principle of moments. So let's see, let's review. Okay, recall, right? Moment, a concept of moment. So we have an x and y axis here. Okay, so x, y. Then let's get a resultant force here. That's your r. Now remember, in our previous topics, this r can be resolved into components r, y, and r, x. Okay? And then using the concept of moment, remember, moment is force times distance. If you have more than one force, it's a measure of force times distance. And then we have this equation, Rd is just equal to the summation of force times distance. This is your Varignon's theorem, or Varignon's theorem. And then the, the, the more common equation that we use is by using its components. Since D is not always easy to solve. So the D here is here. Yeah. And as you can see, it's not as easy to solve. So instead of using this, we write Ry, right? Ry times perpendicular distance. If you take the origin of your axis as your moment center, okay, Ry perpendicular distance is this. We call this Ix, right? or just x. Okay, so Ry times x equals summation of individual forces. Okay, since this is along the y-axis, so Fy and again multiplied by their individual distances from the y-axis. In the same way, Rx, okay, so this is your Rx, this is your Iy or just y. Rx times y, equals summation of forces x times their individual distances y. So now for the concept of centroid and center of gravity, recall definition for center of gravity has something to do with weight. So the force in question for centroid or center of gravity is weight. So we're going to replace this with total weight of your member or your object multiplied by its x distance from a reference axis. So we call that x distance as x bar, okay? Is equal to summation of, you're gonna divide now your total weight into smaller weights, like what we did with force, and then multiply it by their individual forces or individual distances x as well. And then the same way, w times y bar is also equal to summation of w times x. 
And this is the equation that we'll follow to get the center of gravity. Center of gravity now is at x bar and at y bar. Okay? Yeah. So as you can see, wx equals summation of wx, wy bar equals summation of wy. Now look here at the figure. You have this irregular shaped object. It has a total weight, capital W. And its centroid is located at x bar and y bar. Okay, so to solve for that x bar and y bar, again, we're going to use this equation. So look here, front view, this is the front view. We have your total weight multiplied by x bar is equal to individual weight. So as you can see, this total weight is divided into smaller weights. So let's say we have W1 here, so W1, and then multiplied by its individual distance x, so x1, and plus W2 times x2, and so on and so forth. Same way with y, this is now a side view. This is your total weight. Okay, so total weight times y bar equals individual weight. Weight 1 times y1 plus weight 2 times y2 and then plus so on and so forth. Okay, so it's very similar to your moment. Next, how about centroid of areas and lines? So centroid of area is the point corresponding to the center of gravity of a plate of infinitesimal thickness. Infinitesimal means very, 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 very small, okay? So therefore, since we're talking about area here, what we have is equation for weight. We'll write weight in terms, in terms of area. Now remember, equation for weight is just density times volume, right? Remember from your physics. Density times volume. Now, what is the volume of an, of an object? If an object has uniform thickness, the volume of an object is just area times thickness. So that's why weight here is equal to gamma Ta. And then let's see how it transforms to this equation. So once again, area, weight is just gamma V which is also equal to gamma. By the way, gamma is your density, or rho v. Okay. In this case, it's gamma. So unit weight times volume, and that's just area or thickness times area. Now, sub this value here, so we get gamma t total A equals summation of gamma P A, where A is your individual areas. Now, gamma, your density, your unit weight of an object is the same no matter which part of your object you're considering, right? So since gamma is equal or constant, we can cancel that out. And then, as I've mentioned earlier, uniform thickness. So thickness cancels out as well. Oh, by the way, there's X bar your X bar and then X. So therefore, you're left with AX bar equals summation of AX. And then in the same way, a, a y bar is equal to summation of a y. Okay? So that's your other equation. And then this expression, a x bar and a y bar, is called moment of area. Now we use centroid here rather than center of gravity because. We don't consider the weight of the object here. That's why it's better to use the term centroid. Next, for lines. So a line may be assumed to be the axis of a homogeneous slender wire. So now our new equation will be weight equals gamma AL. So let's illustrate that. So you have a line. Let's say you have this line. Let's use a straight line. Straight line. And then it has uniform cross-sectional area. Okay. Yeah. This is now your area. And then this is the length. Right? So recall weight is gamma V. And then for a wire, that V is just cross sectional area multiplied by length. And once again, if we use this equation, gamma, let's use LA. Gamma LA is e times X bar, A okay, weight times X bar equals summation of weight times X. So 
So wait, that's gamma L A again. So gamma small L A. Once again, density is constant, so cancel out. What what else is constant? We have uniform cross sectional area. So area also cancels out, no matter where you are along your line. So therefore, you're left with L X bar equals L X or summation of L X. And then Ly bar is just equal to the summation of Ly. And that's your equation for centroid of a line. As you can see. And look here. Look at this image. You have your line here. Now its centroid is somewhere here. So this is your x bar, this is your y bar. So that means your centroid is not confined to your area. It can be outside the area depending on the shape and dimensions of your object, okay? So it's normal that your centroid is outside the area. Hmm? Ah, yes, yes. Sorry, here, by the way. What's your name? Oh. Summation y times one. Yes. And then John? Ah, okay, sorry. Here, why? Yes, this is why. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amelia, very good. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Welcome. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So by the way, class, our class was observed. That was Sir Vilio Verde. He was observing our class. Very good class. So once again, let's continue. <laughs> Thank you for being cooperative. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Gold star. Hopefully. All right. So recall I've mentioned infinitesimal area, right? We have very, very, very small area. Now, if you recall your past subjects, whenever we have or we whenever we want to take the summation of a very small area. We use integral calculus, right? So that's why another way to solve for centroid is using integral calculus. So instead of ax bar equals summation of ax, we use ax bar equals integral of x dA, where dA is the differential area A. Okay? So once again, differential area A is a very, very, very small portion of your total area. So apply that to all of our equations so far. A y bar is also equal to integral of y dA, L x bar is integral of x dL, and L y bar, this is L y bar by the way, equals integral of y dL. Okay, so that's your centroid determined by integration. So another thing about our centroid is if a plane figure has a line of symmetry, its centroid is located on that line. Now, if a plane figure has two lines of symmetry, the centroid is located at the point of intersection of the lines. So let's talk about how that came to be. So symmetry. So we've discussed symmetry before and how it helps us simplify our solutions. So let's take a triangle, right? This is not an equilateral triangle, by the way. It's just a triangle. And then This is the line of symmetry of your triangle, right? It's symmetrical along the vertical axis, meaning left side equals right hand side. So according to what was said earlier, the centroid is actually somewhere here. And as you can see, the centroid is along the line of symmetry of your object. 
Now, what about this shape? Okay. This shape has a line of symmetry here, right? It's symmetrical. Left and right is the same thing or equal to each other. And then top and bottom portion is also equal. So we have two lines of symmetries, and then the intersection of that is also your centroid. Okay? So it's your centroid, centroid, or center of gravity if it, if it has uniform density. Okay? So that's what we have with symmetry. Now, using those concepts, we can create equations for x bar, y bar, or centroid of simple or common geometric shapes. Let's look here for your area, okay? So whenever you're taking your centroid, you have to figure out first what is your reference axis because from that reference axis is where your x bar and y bar will be taken. So for example here, okay, our reference axis is this line. Therefore, that is where your y bar and x bar will be computed from. So no matter the shape of your area, the equation will always be one-third base okay, or one-third height. So for example here, this is the centroid of your triangle. It's located at one-third base or one-third height. This is your y bar since this is your referential x-axis. And this is just one-third h or h over 3. Later on, I'll discuss more about triangles. So just remember, for triangles, it's always one-third height or one-third base from the higher edge. One-third base from the higher edge. That's what you have to remember for triangles. And obviously, the area of that is just one-half base times height. Next, how about a quarter circular area? So it's here. Once again, get your referential axis or reference axis. So for this, quarter circle, this is your reference axis, okay? So this is your x bar, this is your y bar. x bar and y bar are equal, is 4r over 3 pi. And then the last column just shows the area, equations for area, okay? So just take note of that. So that's easy for a quarter circle. Again, it's just 4r over 3 pi. How about your semicircle? For your semicircle, this is your referential x axis, and then this is your Referential y axis. So x bar now is zero because x bar is the distance from your y axis. Your centroid is directly on the y axis or the referential y axis. Again, it's up to you to place where that is. But for this table, it's already given, it's placed here. That's why x bar here is zero because centroid is directly on the y axis. And then y bar. Okay, y bar again is just this height from the edge for r over 3 pi again. Okay? Now, same thing with your ellipse. A quarter ellipse, x bar and y bar, almost the same. x bar is 4a over 3 pi, y bar is 4b over 3 pi. Now, for a quarter ellipse, a is half the length of your major axis. B is half the length of your minor axis. Okay, remember your calculus class, your ma major and minor axis for ellipses. Or just remember A is the longer axis, half the length of the longer axis. Okay? And then your semi, oh, semi elliptical. So here, the right drawing. Once again, they place the axis on the center here. That's why x bar is 0, and once again, y bar is the same, or b over 3 pi. For your parabola, it's you know, semi-parabola. You have here, okay? So only one side. x bar, so they took this as their axis, y axis, and then this is the x axis. So x bar is this length, and as you can see, it's 3a over 8. And a is just, again, the length of the lactose rectum, half the length of the lattice rectum, 3a over 8. And then y bar is just this. Again, this is from the x-axis, so that's 3h over 8. And then for a parabola, a normal parabola, again, they place the axis right on the centroid. That's why this is 0. 
And then, y bar is the same as your semi-parabola is th over 5. Okay? Now you also have your spandrel. Let's talk about the general spandrel since this is more common use. So this is your general spandrel, right? Your center is somewhere here. Once again, they use this as the reference axis. So x bar is n plus 1 over n plus 2 over a. y bar is n plus 1 over 4 n plus 2 times h. So what's n? n is the degree of your parabola. If you have a third degree parabola, then n is 3, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's what n is. And then a, this a is just the length of your parabola or length of your spandrel. And then h is the height of your spandrel. Okay? So this shaded area is what we call your spandrel. You'll encounter that in future mechanic subjects. And then lastly, for shapes, we have your sector. So x bar is just 2r sine alpha or 3 alpha, where alpha is half the angle subtended by your arc. So this is your arc. Angle subtended is this. So half of, half of that is your alpha. And then y bar is 0 again because it's directly on the x-axis, your centroid. And that ends the shapes. Now let's talk about the lines. So we have a quarter circular arc and a semicircular arc. Once again, these are your reference axis. Okay, so let's start with the quarter arc. X bar and Y bar are the same. It's 2R over pi. Now for the semicircular arc, X bar is zero once again because the centroid here is placed on the centroidal axis. And then y bar is also 2r over pi. And then lastly, arc of a circle. And x bar is r sine alpha over alpha, while y bar is 0. Okay? So those are your equations for common shapes. Now, okay. So we won't just get the centroid of a single shape. We're going to get the centroid of a composite area. So many of the figures used in engineering are composed of combinations of geometrical figures. If a given area can be divided into parts, each, each centroid of which is known, the area moment of the total area will be the sum of the moments of area of its parts. In short, again, this is just Varignon's theorem. Total equals summation of the individual. So as you can see here, total area times x bar equals summation of individual areas times x. So previously, our small a is a very, very, very small area, right? So now, that a, we called it elemental area before, has become the areas of the geometric shapes. Okay? Do you have any questions so far? Please answer in the chat. Okay, since you don't have any questions, let's now move on to our examples. Okay, so for example number one, I'm not going to take recitation, okay? Just follow along so that you can understand the concept of centroids and center of gravity, okay? Then question number two onwards, recitation. So ready your calculators, you can still solve along just so... You can understand if you got the concepts correct. Let me just fix this. Okay, let's begin. Example number one. Once again, you can just listen and solve along on your own. 
Number one, determine the coordinates of the centroid of the area shown with respect to the given axis. So there's already a reference axis given. You don't have to decide that anymore. Okay, so let's see. So commonly, one of the first steps to get the centroid is to determine the types of areas or shapes that we have. Okay? So one of the more obvious shapes is this, your triangle. So let's call that your area one. And then you also have this semicircle. So let's call that your area two. Okay? So area two. And then we have area one. So after determining the shapes, solve for the area. So individual area one, again, that's just a right triangle. So that's just one half base times height. Base of this is this length, which is equal to the diameter of your semicircle. The radius of your semicircle is three. Therefore, diameter is six. Therefore, base of this right triangle is also six. And then height is given, it's 9. So solving for this, you get 27. Yes, correct. And then A2, you have a semicircle. So to get the area of a semicircle, that's just 1 half pi r squared. So 1 half pi, our radius is given to be 3 squared. So instead of writing out the decimal, you can just write 9 pi over 2 so that I don't have to store this value, okay? Next, take the total area, which is just A1 plus A2. Solving for that, 27 plus 9 pi over 4, and uh, 9 pi over 2 is just 41.14, okay? Now, typically, this is what you want to store in your calculator. Okay, after storing, Let's move on to the actual solving of our centroid. So recall, for areas, we have this equation, right? A x bar equals summation of A x, okay? So A is this. X bar is one of the things we're solving for. So now just write your equations. So let's start with A1. A1, and then x. Remember, x is the distance from the y-axis. Y is the distance from the x-axis, okay? So therefore, again, we're starting out with the A1 is the triangle. Centroid of your triangle is somewhere here, okay? And therefore, x bar is the distance from the x axis, uh, y axis. So it's this length right here. So let's call that x1. And how do we get x1? Remember, the equation is one third height from the higher edge. So to illustrate, let's say you have this triangle, right? Instead of calling it base and height, let's call that L1 and L2. This is L1, this is L2, okay, or A and B. So let's L1, L2. Centroid again is somewhere here. And our distances are from the higher edge. So along this direction, this is the higher edge. So that is where your one third length is and this is one third l1 same thing here our okay looking on this direction our distance is from the higher edge the higher head higher edge is this this is your one third length and the length is l2 okay so those are your distances for a triangle now apply that here we're measuring along this direction, so here, right? And then and it's distance, or this is the measurement from the higher edge as well. So our equation is one third times base. And once again, the base is, or one third times length, the length is three plus three, six. So one third times six, okay? And then plus A2, semicircle. And once again, the centroid of a semicircle is somewhere here. Okay? So therefore, this is my x bar. 
And that x bar is this length, which is which is equal to the radius of your semicircle, which is given to be three. So that's why this is just a two times three. And then solving for x bar, we get two point thirty four. Yes, correct. Okay. Now do the same for y bar. So once again, the equation is a y bar equals summation of a y. So a y bar is just a one times y one. Now let's figure out what's y one. So let's start again with the triangle. Y again is the distance from the reference x axis. So this is your centroid. This is your y. Okay. And look here. This distance is from the smaller edge. So what do we do there? Well, again, going back to this, I mean, this is L1. If this is one-third L1, the remaining length now is two-thirds L1, right? One minus one-third is two-thirds. So this is two-thirds L1. So therefore, this is two-thirds times nine. Again, because its measurement is taken from the lower edge. So two-thirds times nine. And then plus A2. So A2. Once again, this is your center. Your centroid. So this is your Y2. How do we get Y2? Well, first of all, it's this length plus this length, right? And this length is nine. So this is nine. Plus, now my problem is getting this length. So to get that, you can look at your table. Yeah. We're looking at a semicircle. So this is your semicircle. And as you can see, the equation, the distance from the centroid to this base, okay, to the diameter, is for, oh, sorry, that's ellipse. The distance from the center or centroid from this axis is 4r over 3 pi. Okay, again, it's this length right here. Okay, 4r over 3 pi. So therefore, ito yun. this is the 4r over 3 pi. So plus that length, again, 4r, r is 3 over 3 pi. And then from this, we can solve for y bar. And y bar should be 7.47. Now we're not done. Okay. Look here, what's specified? Determine the coordinates. So we need to write our answer in the form of a coordinate. And to do that, just do this. So x coordinate is 2.34, y coordinate is 7.47. Remember? Coordinates are distances from your x and y axis. Okay? Yeah, that's your x bar and y bar. Now, by the way, okay, uh, some of you want me to write it this way, right? Instead of solving for this, you want me to write 1 half times 1 third times 6 plus a2 times 3 all over a. Okay? To solve for x bar. Now, the reason why I'm not writing it that way, instead I'm leaving it like this, so that you can practice solving for the variable without having to transpose everything. Okay, so in your calculator, you should already know I have to type it this way. Okay, so practice. The reason why I want you to practice that is so that you can solve for problems faster. Okay, so that's number one. Do you have any questions for number one? Please answer in the chat. Okay, good. Since you don't have any questions, you can now move on to number two. And now I'm going to take recitation. Please ready your calculator. Okay, number two. A slender homogeneous wire of uniform cross section is bent into the shape shown in the figure. Determine the coordinates of the central. 
So now we don't have a shape, we have lines. So now when we have lines, what we do is we figure out or we section our lines. Okay, what do I mean by that? So here it's kind of obvious how to separate our lines, right? We have this. So let's call that your line one. Yeah. That's your line one. We have a semicircular arc here. So let's call that your line two. And we have a diagonal line here. So let's call that your line three. So now you have your L1, L2, L3. So same with your area. You're going to solve for the lengths of your lines. So small L1 is equal to the length of this line. And it's given. So that's just 6. L2. Okay, this is your L2. Can anybody give me what is the length of L2? Very good, John. And then Gian, Andre. So, Obre Portades. Okay. So, it's 12.57, or so that I don't have to store that. It's actually 4 pi. So how did it become 4 pi? Okay. So recall, okay, if you have a regular circle, the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r, right? Now, if you cut that in half, okay, the perimeter of a semicircle is just 1 half 2 pi r. And our r here is 4 inches. So sub that in. So 1 half times 2 pi r is just pi r. And once again, our r is 4. So this is 4 pi. Perimeter is the same as the length of your line. So that's why this is 4 pi. Okay? And then L3, it's given to be 8. And then same thing, after taking the individual lengths, take the total length, which is just L1 plus L2 plus L3. Please solve what's total length. Correct, John and Carla. So Torres, but Okay, so it's 26.57. Once again, ideally, you'd want to store this in your calculator. So 26.57. Okay, now let's use our equation. So recall LX bar equals summation of LX. Once again, L is this. So L, X bar is one of the things we're looking for. And let's start with L1. So look here. This line is to the left of your Y axis. Now, same with your moment. We have sign convention here. Okay. If the distance is to the left and below your axis, your distance is negative. If your distance is above or to the right of your axis, your distance is positive. Let's look at example one. All of our centroids, all of our distances are upward or above and to the right of your axis. That's why all of these are positive. Now we have an example here. This is to the left. Okay. So therefore, negative. So L1 times distance. And that distance is equal to, and this is your x1. Can anybody give me what this x1? Correct, Angela and Jermaine. Garing Borde. Okay, Garing
It's ne it's four, negative four. Very good. That's why. You're given a radius here, and that radius is also equal to this. So that's why it's four. Okay. Next, plus L2. Where's my L2? It's this. Okay, actually, let's note our centroids. So centroid of this line is here, right? Centroid of this is somewhere here, right? For a arc, for an arc. Oh, here. Is it here? Let's see. It. Sonium? Oh, yeah, correct. It's there. It's here. This is the centroid. And then for this, centroid is here. Can anybody give me x bar, uh, x distance for this semicircle? Very good. Correct, Jan and Carla, it's zero. So Carla is not going zero. Very good. Oops. It's zero. Why? Because, again, your centroid is directly on the y axis, so x bar is zero. And then plus L3. Okay. Can anybody give me? What is this L3? Ah, oh, sorry, this x sub 3. Correct, John and John. Oh, but it has to be John. Why not King John? Okay, Torres and Bordades, and then Gary. 7.46 is the answer. So Torres, you already have two points. Let's give it to Bordades. And then who else? Um, Garing, B, C, D, G. Okay, 7.46, how? Oh, okay. Well, first of all, okay, three is the summation of this length plus this length, right? And this length is your radius, which is four. So this is four plus whatever this length is. Now let's isolate that, okay? So we have this, right? Well, this is where the uh, centroid is, okay? If that's where the centroid is, the total length of this is eight. Okay, so it is divided into two equal parts. Therefore, this is four and then this is four, okay? So this is four. Or then if you want to extend, we can extend this just so that we can see. This is also for, okay. And then we're given an angle here, 30. So this length is equal to this, which is actually the base of this right triangle. And then to get that, you can use your trigo function, specifically cosine, okay? So recall, Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, this length adjacent is just hypotenuse times cosine theta. So 4 cosine 30. So 4 plus 4 cosine 30, which is equal to 7.46. Okay? And now please solve what's x bar. Okay. Correct, Skyler and Jade. Pamat, Matt, Simon. It's 1.34. Okay. Next, let's get our y bar. So same equation, Ly bar is just summation of Ly. So Ly bar equals, let's start with L1. Okay. 
Okay, now let's figure out your y1, y2, y3. Okay. Um, okay. This is your y1. And it's easy to see. What's y1? Very good. Correct, John, Angela, Dian, the Lord, starting over. Daring is two points. Obre is two points. So the Lord. Who else? Who else? Ola no sumobo. Let's give it to Gary. Who shall next? Okay, three. So it's three. Why? Total length is six. Uh, the middle of that is. Here. And obviously, the middle is just cutting it into two equal parts. So this is three. Okay. So six over two, three. It's above the, the x axis, so it's still positive. Then plus L2. Once again, let's look at the equation. Okay. So what's given here is two r over pi, and then distance is from this bottom portion here. So from centroid to bottom, that's two r over pi. So centroid to bottom is exactly what we need. This is exactly your y sub 2. So again, it's 2r over pi. So 2 radius is given 4 over pi. And then lastly, plus L3. And then this is your y sub 3. Can anybody give me what is y sub 3? Correct, Garden, Batun, De Leon. Garden, Batun, 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 De Leon, yes. Who else? Lawrence, Tama. Samantha, Tama. Okay. So it's two. Yeah, sine 30. So this is for cosine 30. Therefore, this is for sine 30. This length is equal to your y3. So for sine 30. Please solve what's y bar. Rex Tyler, Gian, Ahmad Mat, H I J K, and then OP. Okay, who else? Obre, correct. Navarro, correct. Correct, Gerard. Gerardo, please. So 2.48. Once again, let's check what is being asked. Coordinates. Determine the coordinates. So once again, write this in coordinate form. 1.34. X-coordinate, Y-coordinate is 2.48. And that is number two. Any questions for number two? Yes, yes, yes. Please answer in the chat.
Okay, none. Let's move on to the last question for today, number three. Okay, number three. Locate the centroid of the shaded area shown. So we're not looking for coordinates, it's centroid. So just look for X bar, Y bar. All right, so there's actually two ways to solve for this. Okay, first way is how we've been doing it. And then I'll show you another way. So let's start with what I've told you. Okay, method one. Right. So method one again is figuring out the areas that we have. So let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. If I draw a straight line here, I get three triangles. So this is area one, area two, area three. Okay. So as usual, let's get the values. So A1, one half base times height. So one half. This is the base of my triangle one, which is six plus six, so that's 12. And then height, this is the height. So total length of this is 12. And look here, this height is equal to six, which is equal to this. So 12 minus six, six, okay? Times six. And then this is equal to 36. Okay, next, A2, one half base time side again, so one half. Can anybody tell me what's the base of this area? Correct, six. Bara, correct, Carla. And then, oh, Baring, yes, three. And then Andre de la Vega, correct. Six, yeah. six. It's this. This is the base, which is equal to six. And then height is this height, which is also six. So this is equal to 18. Yeah. And then lastly, A3, one half, once again, look here. Base is equal to six. And then obviously height is six. And then it's also just 18. And then taking the total area, 72, right? 36 plus 36, 72. Okay, now I have all my areas. We can now use our equation. So A x bar equals A1, okay? Now we get x1. So these are the centroids of our triangles. Okay, and then this is your x1, right? Can anybody give me what's the value of x1? Correct, Carla, and then Jade. So Ibarra, Simone. Ibarra, Simone. It's four. Ano nakuha ang four? One third base from the higher edge. This is the base. This is the higher edge, so one third. Base of that is six plus six, 12. One third times 12 is four. Once again, one third base. Okay, plus A2. A2, oh, sorry, ito. So here, this is your X2. What's the value of X2, please? Correct, Jermaine and Vivian, Borde Bajo. Oh, sorry. Two, one. 
two. Why? Once again, one third base from the higher edge. This is the base of triangle two. This is the higher edge. So that's just one third. And then again, the base is six, so one third times six. And then plus six sub three. So can anybody give me value of x sub three? Correct, Carla and De Leon, Sophia. Who else? I we correct Okay, it's 10. How did we get 10? Well, first of all, x sub 3 is just a summation of this plus this, right? So that's just 6 plus whatever that is. What is this? So remember, our centroid is one third base from the higher edge. This is the base, which is six. This is the higher edge. And we're looking for this length. So we're not going to take the one third. We're going to take the two thirds. Okay? So plus two thirds. So six plus two thirds, six is four. So that's why it's 10. And then solve for x bar was the answer. Okay, but kayo nagkaka 5.25. Man kayo. Correct, Andre, Kathleen, De La Vega, Dupra. Okay, Kathleen. Okay, so it's five. So you make five, may butal. Five lang. Five unit inches. Okay, recall this is inches, this is feet. And then last, y bar. So a y bar, a1. Let's look for y bar. So this is my centroid. So this is y bar. So that's y, sorry, y1, rather. And then what's y1? Please solve. Yon, correct. Correct, Carla. Sophia. Yep, Sophia. Jermaine, correct. Borbe. Samantha, correct. Okay. Two. Okay, wala nang mabol, so let's give it to the first one. Carla. But three. Okay. So it's eight. Why? Because once again, y sub one is just this plus this. And this is six. So six plus this length is one third base from the higher edge. And this is already the higher edge, so it's just one third base. And the base is six, right? This is the base, and that's also six. One third six. That's why it's 12. Oh, sorry, it's eight. 
plus A2 plus A2 A. And then this is your Y sub 2. Can anybody give me what's Y sub 2? Correct, it's 4. Correct, Carla, Sophia, Jermaine, Samantha. Okay, correct, Patricia. And then Adrian. Rivera. Okay. Four. The answer is four. Why? Well, we're taking the measurement from the lower edge. So we're not gonna use one third, it's two thirds base. And the base is six. So two thirds times. That's equal to four. And then plus A3. Now A3 is the same as A2, so we don't have to solve. Okay, this is your Y3. Once again, we're, sol we're taking the distance from the lower edge, so it's two thirds. So A3 times two thirds. Please compute what's Y bar. Correct, Adrian, Jermaine, Sophia, and then oh, and then Kathleen. Sila na tayo. Sila di pa na patum. Sophia, hello. Tuna, Barbie, Tuna, Simpa, Okay, Sky. Gian Tama, Dukra, Dukra, Tuna, Bara, Tuna, Torres, Dalona, Samantha, Dalona, Pamita, okay. Oh. okay, correct, John, six, okay, so six, and then once again, our unit is inches. Do you have any questions for method one, number three? Please answer in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna end the lecture there since we don't have time. So do you have any questions in general? By the way, those who messaged me, I'm gonna answer your messages later. I wasn't able to answer it because I had something to do, but don't worry, again, I'm gonna answer it later tonight, those who messaged me. Yes, since we're almost out of time, I'm gonna discuss method two next meeting, which is Thursday. So on Thursday, the first part of the lecture or the meeting will be for lecture. Second part would be for seat work. The coverage of your seat work will be everything I've discussed for module three. So centroid and depending if I add any more topics. Now, method two is using subtraction. So to give you a sneak peek, method two is taking this as a rectangle and then subtracting the areas of these two. Okay, so that's sneaky. Yeah, you can do that. You can subtract empty spaces. So you can try it on your own if you want to solve this. Okay, take this as your area one. This is your area two. This is your area three. Okay, and then when you do this, instead of plus, you're going to subtract the empty spaces. Okay, you can try that. Any other questions? concerns. So your module Lord grade two will be uploaded on Saturday. Okay, so kaya pa. Saturday modular grade two. Okay, and then 
those who haven't answered your quizzes, you don't have to message me about it. You can just answer it directly. Just make sure you've sent me an excuse letter signed by your guardian explaining why you didn't take the quiz on time with proof, okay? If you don't have a signed letter, I'm not going to consider your score even if you answered your exam. Okay. Great. I'm going to end the recording there.